All right, Shun, do you think we should wait a couple more minutes or do you want to get going? Up to you. I don't mind. Yeah. Um, I think we can wait, wait a little bit. Yeah. Are the instructions that you start with the kind that you have to give people time to run anywhere? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. I just start with the Docker and then okay. so, and pick up from the yesterday. Okay. So do I understand correctly that people should do a git poll? Um, oh, was that that might have been for the smash uh, session. Um, it's uh, it's a useful that uh, um, if you haven't updated the summer school repository uh, since Sunday, then uh, you will uh, you might see an error when you make the movie yesterday uh, by running the scripts because there will be an error you will encounter saying evolution for movie uh, music or that the file is not found. Um, that means that you need to update your summer school <laughs> repository. Uh, sorry about that. I changed the name in the last minute uh, from last week. So uh, to update the summer school, we can go to the repository, can go to the summer school directory and then do just to get poll origin master and then it will just update all the pull down all the updates uh i i update in the in this morning i saw um quite a few uh modification from the jet session i anticipate that you probably also need to do the update uh um in the following uh, days maybe on uh, maybe tomorrow or next monday when you do the hands-on session for the jet as well so there are some updates you need to uh, need to pull down in for the summer school uh, repository. All right, I think we can start. It's nine oh five uh, here on the east coast. Um, again, so Shun will. I think you have. Do you have an hour or two of hands-on session? I have two hours assigned, but I think I will finish a little bit earlier than that uh, to give Dima some time to set up his uh, simulations. Okay, so uh, Shun will start, and then in about two hours, it's going to be this the smash hands on session with Dima. So please, Shun, go ahead. If you have, if people have any question during uh, the talk, please ask questions on Slack. And uh, when we poll you, uh, we'll ask you to raise your hand so we can see where people are at and then lower your hands. Um, maybe I can lower your hands myself. Uh, so yes, Sean, please go. Okay, uh, good day everyone. So uh, let's welcome to the second day of the hands-on session for the hydrodynamics and the uh, bulk evolution. So today we're still using the same Slack channel as yesterday the July 21, 22 hydro. Uh, you can post your questions uh, in this Slack channel here. So uh, as I have said uh, just a little bit earlier, so um, yesterday when you run the uh, test run uh, scripts, some of you may encounter a uh, error uh, when you want to generate the movie uh, from the Python script. Uh, it may complain that uh, some evolution uh, music file is not found. Uh, it's mainly because that uh, you haven't updated uh, the summer school uh, repository since uh, last Sunday. So if you encounter this such error, uh, just uh, type uh, the following two command. Uh, first, go to the summer school repository where you are, and then just do a git pull origin master. To, to update uh, the school repository to the current version so that you have all the, uh, all the scripts up to date. Okay, that's, uh, uh, if you encounter this error, you can do it. If you don't, uh, you don't need to uh, re re update the repository at least for this session. Okay, 
Uh, I think most of you have uh, successfully uh, finished the test run as we uh, discussed uh, yesterday. Uh, this is mainly just uh, try to help you to gain some intuition about how to set up a run uh, within Jetscape uh, to call the music hydro module to perform a hydrodynamic simulation for one uh, event by event simulations. So on most of the parameters we use default. Uh, which is hide in, in the master uh, XML file. Uh, and we only just uh, try to basically run the uh, package uh, from uh, its uh, as a default mode and then uh, try to uh, look at some intermediate files generated by the hydro module uh, to understand the, the hydrodynamic evolution as a function of time. So today, uh, we will get to a little bit more details about how to actually set up uh, simulations uh, that to uh, that tailor to your interest, your personal interest. For example, uh, the first one that we'll do is try to uh, understand how we can set up uh, the specify the collision energy, uh, collision nuclei, and centrality uh, in the initial state, so that we want to uh, so that you can actually uh, know how to. Uh, set up a simulations uh, for the collision system that you are interested in. So uh, today uh, we'll do an exercise uh, uh, to, to basically run uh, first a central collision, zero to 10% gold gold collision at 200 GeV. And then we'll run another simulations uh, for 20 to 30% uh, uh, lead lead collision and 5 TeV. So the reason uh, I want I pick these two uh, collision systems is that if you look at the, uh, the particle multiplicity produced in these two systems, they are comparable. So if you look at say uh, the uh, uh, at least uh, uh, measurements of the uh, of the charge multiplicity at the HC at five TeV, you find that at twenty to thirty percent, this is about seven hundred. A, a, a uh, number of charged particles. This is uh, comparable with central gold gold collisions at 200 GeV. <clears throat> so uh, my question, my first question is before we run uh, is uh, a question that, uh, uh, what do you think, which system will have a higher initial temperature? Will it be a central gold gold collision 200 GeV or a semi-peripheral regular collision of 5 TeV? These two collisions are in some sense uh, are comparable in terms of uh, number of particle produced. So you can probably uh, send uh, your guess or your estimate uh, on the Slack, which, which system do you think will be hotter at the initial, at the initial time of the hydro. So, uh, so we'll, we'll find out together today uh, by doing these simulations using Jetscape. But you can first post your, uh, your estimate on the Slack uh, uh, to talk, uh, to think about what, which system you think will be hotter. And uh, you can sort of give a, a brief uh, reason how, why, why you think about this, why you think like this one. So may I ask the chair, do we get any response? <laughs> How people still think about it. Um, so, so people are writing uh, slowly mm -hmm. some, some answer to your question. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody asked um, yeah. mm -hmm. the multiplicities that you use mm -hmm. uh, in the simulation, uh, do they have the same acceptance region as for the data? Mm, usually, uh, so we, we are talking about the end data. So usually it's the charge multiplicity per unit rapidity, even though maybe at least measure the uh, multiplicity within a repeated range, say from minus 0.8 to 0.8 or minus 0.5 to 0.5. This could be a different uh, if you look at say Phoenix acceptance, which will be narrower to be maybe smaller than 0.35. But usually reported is uh, divided by the, uh, the the, the repeated uh, interval. So it's a 
per unit rapidity charge multiplicity. So if the rapidity distribution is flat uh, in the central uh, collisions, then, then this number are more or less comparable, uh, even if you are done with a different acceptance region. And usually these number are extrapolated without the NPT part uh, when they report these uh, numbers. Okay, All right. Um, I think that should answer the question on Slack. Uh, only one person commented on Slack saying mm -hmm. that uh, lead lead 2030 should be mm -hmm. hotter. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Because it has the same entropy deposited in a smaller transverse area. Yeah, that's a good, that's a very good uh, intuition. Yes, so, 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 so if you think about the uh, lead, it's a more, it's a has elliptic shape. So the transverse area <clears throat> that cover in these uh, semi peripheral collisions uh, is smaller than the uh, central go go area, uh, uh, collisions. So that if you pack the same amount of entropy inside the, uh, inside the smaller area, you get a higher you get a higher entropy density or then you get a higher temperature at the initial time. So that's a very good answer. And we want to try to verify uh, these intuitions uh, through the simulation with GSK framework. Um, so so the, to, to, to carry out the simulation is pretty easy. So you just, uh, uh, pretty straightforward, I would say, you can just uh, copy paste the commands that uh, in these uh, notes to your, uh, uh, to your, uh, to your, uh, the terminal and then start running. So before that, we need to actually uh, go into a Docker container so that we can run the simulations. So let me uh, let me first uh, let me first uh, create a Docker container. <clears throat> so as you can see that uh, uh, so in my terminals, and now I change from my username to to the Jscape user, which again this indicates that I'm now actually inside a Docker container. So I go to Jetscape and then I'm, I'm going to the build folder where uh, I will start to run my simulations. So um, so I can, I will launch the, um, the simulations uh, and then explain the, uh, the setup about how, how we set up the, uh, the, the initial profile to do it. So, um, so as you can see that uh, we run two commands at one time in this case. The first command is run Jetscape with uh, XML file, which uh, we uh, kind of specify to run central Google 200 GB simulations. After that, I have uh, uh, scripts, these collection scripts, basically um, try to, sorry, try to, uh, try to sweep all the results into a folder so that when we run the simulation again, it will not overwrite our previous results. So let's just uh, launch the simulations. So if you are running uh, first time, uh, the GoGo 200 simulations, the Trento uh, initial condition will again generate some minimum bias uh, samples to help us to estimate uh, the centrality, uh, uh, centrality uh, events that we want to simulate. So that's basically uh, what is shown here. It just take a few seconds for it to finish. And then once it's finished, we're now uh, simulating a central zero to 10% go-to-go -to collisions. So while it's running, so uh, let's dive a little bit into the XML files uh, that uh, is uh, showing in the, uh, the uh, cheat sheet uh, on, on the right. So what we actually specify in this case uh, that uh, we want to run GoGo 200 is to specify the parameters inside the Trento module, telling the Trento uh, to actually generate a gold gold collisions in zero to 10% centralities. So the parameter you need to specify is listed here. You need to specify the species of the target and the projectile nuclei. And then the collision energy, the center of mass collision energy in GEV, uh, in this uh, square root of s. And then uh, you need to specify the cross sections uh, in terms of uh, uh, centimeter, oh no, one over uh, Fermi square. <clears throat> and then, and then the, the no some normalization factor. So uh, in principle, the uh, inelastic cross section for nuclear, nuclear inelastic cross section can be associated with the, uh, the square root of s. So we can actually parameterize this uh, instead of setting uh, by hand. Uh, by hand. Uh, but this is uh, the default setting up, set up in the current rental. 
in the uh, if there's also a uh, updates in the Trento module later on in the future that this is also can be reading as a, a parameterized formula so that you don't need to remember what is the nuclear nuclear cross sections for every collision energies you want to you want to simulate that will make the uh, life a little bit easier the normalization is kind of associated with uh, with the collision energy uh, to basically get you to the correct uh, charge multiplicity. So this is a, a model parameter you have to specify when you run uh, boosting level simulations in 2 plus 1D. And the other one are kind of uh, uh, just uh, setting up uh, uh, centralities. So these are the minimum uh, parameter you need to specify in order to uh, specify a collision system that you want to simulate. Is there any uh, unclear things about the parameters in this uh, in this setup? I would invite anyone to raise their hand if they have any questions, mm -hmm. um, or ask on Slack. I know on Slack sometimes it takes a little longer to type, so mm -hmm. feel free to ra just raise yeah. your hand. Yeah. So in the meantime, we can also set up the second one uh, for the let let. Uh, at the 20 to 30 percent, copy this uh, command, and I'll let the simulation run on the background. So again, see that uh, we also run the let let the 5 TV the first time, so it will also generate the uh, minimum bias uh, uh, estimations uh, table for the uh, for the centrality selections. So there again, is a uh, question uh, about the normalization parameter. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, well, I can read a question as it's mm -hmm. asked. So the normalization parameter sounds like a fine tuned number. Is there a way to know a priori the value of the normalization? So um, it's, a, it's a kind of a model parameter that introduced for the two plus one D uh, simulations or so-called boosting variant simulations. Uh, because that we uh, it, uh, in this setup, you assume that the uh, distribution in the predirection are flat, uh, basically constant. So, so there's an overall kind of height you need to adjust uh, to to get uh, to get the same, uh, the correct uh, particle uh, productions uh, at the middle rapidity. So uh, it's a kind of pure empirical. Um, you would just expect this number to be bigger at a higher energy. Uh, usually. Uh, as a hydro practitioner, uh, if you want to uh, say uh, simulate a new collision system, say let let at the different collision energies, uh, the first thing to do is to to calibrate this normalization factor with the experimental measurements. So this number also changes with different if you're using different uh, viscosity in your simulation, because the uh, viscosity also produce entropy during hydrodynamic simulations. So the normalization at the initial stay, initial density profile will be slight, will be somewhat different. So, so this number is always need to be calibrated uh, before uh, you, you you actually compare to the elliptic flow or mean PT or other observables. So this is always need to be calibrated by hand. You can write some script to do it, but there's a, a no simple formula uh, trying to uh, map this uh, exactly. For ideal hydro, probably you can by assuming entropy uh, per barrier to be some number, and then you can estimate the total entropy of a system uh, by looking at uh, the, the charge particle uh, number. And then you can estimate uh, how much it is. But usually you need to do uh, two or three iterations to get this number uh, accurate enough to be uh, compared with the data. We have a question. I don't know if it's a follow up or a separate mm -hmm. question from uh, Tribu mm -hmm. Please uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. It's a follow up question, actually. So, so if we, I will not specify the norm, uh, this uh, normalization constant, then it will take a I mean, default value, which will be in this Jetscape uh, uh, user. Mm -hmm. So, is it a good practice to always write this normalization constant according to our energy and uh, collision species? So, uh, so yeah, so, so for different collision energies, you would need a different normalizations. 
So uh, in this note, if you scroll down a little bit and there's a side note session um, here, and you will see that we provide some estimate of the normalization factor for different collision energies uh, for you to use at the, uh, at the first hand. Uh, but you might need to want to fine tune it, but if you use different viscosity. But these are kind of the uh, brief uh, kind of first order estimate that we can use uh, from our pre tuned results. So for, for uranium, uranium is not written here. So, I mean, that's yeah, so important. Usually, yeah, usually you'd expect this normalization factor to be uh, the same for a given collision energy. So, if you run even collide different species, say deuteron gold or copper gold at 200 GeV, you would use the same normalization factor. And, uh, and for example, p lad in the LC, you also use the same as the, as the lad lad ones. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so this normalization factor uh, is uh, no longer, will not be a, uh, a free parameter if you run for 3D simulation. Because in that mm -hmm. case, you can actually use the uh, compute the total energy, mm -hmm. uh, collision energy of the system to constrain this, and then this uh, normalization factor become a uh, you know, become can be constrained by the total collision energy, and then it will not be a free parameter anymore. But in the two D case, it's a, it's a free parameter we can run. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now we have the two simulations finished. I hope you also uh, finish on your side. Uh, then we can actually now uh, start uh, to make some plots or comparisons uh, for these two uh, simulations. So, uh, so, so uh, I will first uh, launch the Jupyter notebook, and then and then show you the result in there. So, if you are not setting up the Jupyter notebook, it's, that's also fine. You can use the similar uh, Python script inside the hydro session folder to, um, to, to basically uh, to, to, to generate the plot, the same plot as uh, I was showing you. So uh, now we go to the hydro session uh, inside the Jupyter notebook. And today, uh, if we want to now compare the two different collision systems, we are using this hydro evolved collision system compare uh, notebook to, to generate the plots uh, for this specific comparison. Again, the first cell here is just some setup for the Jupyter notebook, and we can use uh, shift enter to execute uh, different uh, cells. Here, I will uh, we basically reading the two uh, results we just ran, and the goal go 200 at zero to 10 percent, and let that at uh, five. Uh, 5 TV and 20 to 30%. So we load the results uh, that uh, intermediate results that generate by the hydro, uh, it's specified in this uh, file name. <laughs> and then we can look at temperature. And uh, here is the temperature comparison between the two collision system. And indeed you can see that uh, uh, for this uh, particular uh, two events, uh, at least, we get the higher uh, peak temperature at the initial time for the 20 to 30 percent, however, even the average temperature of 20 to 30 percent lead lead is higher than the one at zero to five, uh, zero to 10 percent gold gold at 200 GeV. So they differ by from like about 300 MeV to about 260 MeV, about 40 MeV difference. <clears throat> and also, uh, you can see that uh, as a function of time, uh, the system uh, actually uh, drops, the temperature actually drops faster at the LC energy compared to the RIC energy, indicating that the system expands faster because that uh, uh, the compactness of the fireball at lead that semi peripheral lead, lead generate a large pressure gradient, and the system expands faster and also cools faster. And it lives a little bit shorter lifetime compared to the central gold gold collisions. Then we can look at the, uh, the transverse flow. And you can indeed see that uh, the average transverse flow in a uh, semi-peripheral lead, lead collisions is actually larger than the gold gold collisions, about like 20 to 30% bigger, uh, uh, higher uh, for the transverse flow compared to the gold gold one. 
And this is also in line with our uh, expectation that uh, uh, the system expand faster with a larger radio flow, and this also drops temperature uh, faster in this way. So these two plots are kind of telling us a consistent message about the, uh, the, the stronger expansions uh, or fast expansions in the red red system compared to gold gold. And further on, we can look at uh, the evolution of eccentricity. And here, uh, the plot is a little bit trivial because in the semi-peripheral, we have a, a bigger uh, a elliptic shape of the fireball. So it starts with a bigger eccentricity compared to the central go-go collisions, which start with a lower eccentricity. And both of them reduce as a function of time. And last but not least, we can look at uh, the development of moment anisotropy, uh, which, which is related to the elliptic flow. And you can see that the, 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 the anisotropy grows to a bigger value uh, for the left red collisions. And uh, actually this will result in a larger V2 uh, for the left red collision compared to gold coat. So these are the, uh, the, the plot that we can actually generate uh, quickly when we run uh, just uh, ge uh, escape to, to gain some intuitions about uh, collision system at uh, different energy and different centrality. So any questions about the plots that we have just obtained? That uh, you have any question about the uh, hydro simulations? There is a question. There's one. There is one hand raised. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering about this uh, ellipticity uh, plot. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. of course, now that the two are different. Um, if we were to consider. Uh, Gold, gold, and lead, lead in the same centrality bin, mm -hmm. then uh, would would there be a substantial difference in the uh, in the ellipticity uh, mm -hmm. either question. either at the start or at all? Yeah, so so good question. So I think uh, uh, so uh, my my expectation will be they are will be similar because they are very big nucleus. So if I look at uh, a similar centrality, 20 to 30%, if they corresponding to a similar range of impact parameter, so the, the initial eccentricity will be similar. But also it's a good, uh, since you pose these good questions, you can also uh, actually uh, test, test your intuitions using Jetscape by just, by just changing the XML file. Uh, by, for example, uh, in your case, uh, if you want to say, I want to compare both 20 to 30 percent uh, gold gold versus lead lead, I can basically modify my uh, my XML file uh, here uh, by instead of to zero to ten percent, I can do twenty to thirty percent. So that will basically help me to perform a, a simulation for gold gold simulations at uh, twenty to thirty percent, and then you can use a similar uh, you can use the script by changing the input file and then make the comparison yourself. So I think that'll be a good exercise for you uh, to, 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 to test this. And you can run, even run a few events to see uh, how, how they fluctuate because these are events by the fluctuating initial conditions. One event may not be represent the overall conclusion, but uh, you can run a few events to, to get idea. So I strongly encourage you to try it out yourself on your locally and see how, how the comparison looks like. And also you're very welcome to share the plots you generate on Slack with other students, if you like. Um, is there any other questions? There are other more technical questions on Slack, but we'll answer those okay. on Slack. Um, if anybody okay. has any question, you're welcome to raise your hand again. Uh, but I don't see anything, so I think you can go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, so so that's uh, the first exercise, I'm trying to give you some intuitions about how we can uh, actually uh, change the collision system to the one you like. As I uh, already uh, mentioned that uh, in the side note, uh, you can actually, uh, uh, we list a few options that you can actually play around with uh, uh, in private. So you can actually uh, change the XML file to different collision systems uh, that you actually would like to do. 
So, um, so for example, um, uh, you can change the energy. Uh, we just need to remember to uh, change the normalization factor and the cross section accordingly with the energy together. And you can also change the nucleus type. Say, uh, if you are interested in comparison, for example, say deuteron gold in central deuteron gold versus peripheral uh, lead lead, a gold gold, you can actually make a comparison of deuteron gold in the 5% versus say gold gold in 70 to 80%, where uh, the particle multiplicity are roughly the same, but uh, you would expect deuteron gold to be more compact. So you can actually take a look at how the temperature and uh, electricity evolutions look like for small versus peripheral, uh, small system versus peripheral gold gold conditions. And you can also try maybe, uh, for example, uranium uranium, where uh, the initial uh, nucleus uh, is uh, deformed uh, with, a, with a large electricity. And this will be somewhat different compared to the round gold or that nucleus. So there's a lot of possibilities you can actually try uh, with these available options in the Trento module to generate different initial conditions. Uh, then I, I, I would like, to, I would want to suggest you to do uh, a few comparison of different system, uh, collision system as a homework. And then you can actually, uh, if you find something cool, you can actually share with uh, all your fellow students and also us to see something interesting comparisons you would like to share. But this will actually help you to practice how to set up any arbitrary uh, collisions you would like to simulate within the Jetscape framework. Okay, uh, now let's move on to the second exercise where uh, we are not uh, changing uh, the collision system, but uh, some medium properties of the quark gluon plasma. Because uh, hydrodynamics is a, a, a very uh, effective uh, framework, we have uh, the shear and bulk viscosities of QGP directly as the model parameters as input. So you can directly change them to actually study the uh, viscous effects on the hydrodynamic uh, uh, variables, like uh, how, the, how the temperature, how the radial flow, elliptic flow, moment and isotropy modifies uh, when you have include different value of viscosities. So that's one of the key uh, uh, model parameters that we like to play around with the hydrodynamic simulations. So uh, we will do a uh, first is a simple step of changing a viscosity to a from zero to a constant. So that will be the first step to to change viscosity, or just include or not include bulk viscosity. There the, there is a next exercise I'm trying to give you a more detailed modifications using uh, a more uh, elaborate control on the temperature dependence on shear bulk viscosity in the next, in the next exercise. So here uh, we are basically uh, trying to give you a example of turn on and off uh, the temperature dependent bulk viscosity by setting this parameter uh, in the XML file uh, uh, to zero and one, from zero and one. So zero means uh, no bulk viscosity and the one means so there is bulk viscosity. And the one uh, is actually uh, the one default uh, bulk uh, viscosity we use in one of the uh, early paper uh, that use music simulation with IP plasma. And the bulk viscosity we'll use is specifically these uh, highly peak functions near the uh, transition temperature. So, uh, so later on, I will tell you how to actually uh, input an arbitrary temperature dependence uh, in, in the code. So now let's uh, first just carry out this exercise. Uh, you can basically copy paste uh, the command uh, in, this, uh, in this box. So we'll first do the shear only test or simulations in our, uh, in our JSCape. So what we do is we copy paste this uh, into my inside the build folder. And then we just run this. And, uh, and this one, uh, we will basically use a uh, lead lead collisions. In the XML file, uh, if you can see, we are using lead lead collisions at 2.76 TeV of 20 to 30% as, as the default. And then we basically uh, are playing around with the parameters in the music uh, uh, sectors in the XML uh, block. 
So uh, what we want to tune up and down is mainly just uh, the, uh, the, the either just increase the turn on and off the bulk viscosity. And also uh, you have a freedom that if you want to do a, something different, you can also change the, the value of shear viscosity here. This is uh, assuming there's a constant shear viscosity in the uh, simulations. Now our first uh, shear only simulation finished. Now I copy the second command to run a simulation with uh, the bulk viscosity. So I mean, let, let me stop here. Maybe uh, while the simulation is on the on the background, is there any unclear about uh, setting up the parameters or the meaning of the parameters in this uh, in this small exercise? So please, everyone, just raise your hand if you have a question. Uh, there's no current question on mm -hmm. Slack. I see some people typing. Somebody was asking again about the normalization, whether you should change mm -hmm. normalization uh, when you change centrality. And uh, no, so usually you, 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 you would expect this uh, centrality, uh, this uh, uh, normalization to be centrality uh, independent. So the centrality is mostly controlled by uh, the collision geometry like the changing of impact parameters of the collision, as well as how you deposit uh, entropies uh, to the medians through these uh, uh, different collision ansatz. So, so the Trento model uh, has uh, uh, ansatz of the, um, for example, the, uh, the energy is proportional to the square root of Ta times Tb, where Ta Tb is the nuclear thickness functions, and that reproduce, uh, can reproduce the centrality dependence of the heavy ion equations uh, in a very good fashion. So we just need to modify the normalization constant uh, to be a constant uh, at, the, at the one fixed energy. And then, and then that will give us uh, uh, the Trento, the rest of the Trento model will give us the central dependence of the multiplicity dependence. There's another question on Slack um about how do we determine or the trend normalization parameter so can you repeat so we mainly so yeah we mainly try to uh, do is to fit to, to the charge multiplicity in zero to five percent centrality so uh, for example experimental uh, uh, experiments say alice or uh, cms they measure the charge multiplicity uh, uh, in data at uh, zero to five percent centrality, we adjust this number so that our zero to five percent simulations uh, match uh, the number to the experimental measurement. So it's not something you know beforehand. It's something that you have to run the hydro at least once, probably a couple of times before you mm -hmm. can fit. Yeah, so if you are clever enough, uh, so there's a, a empirical uh, ratios. So for example, you can estimate uh, how much entropy of one hadron carries. Uh, for example, if you are in the, in the hadrons, it's about like uh, two half plus m over t, and then you can estimate like uh, I think of per charge hadrons, it's uh, about uh, six or eight units of entropy. Uh, if you also take about one two thirds about the neutral particle. So you can convert the measured uh, particle uh, multiplicity to the to estimate total entropy at the at the final state, and then if you assume the hydrodynamics, uh, uh, the viscosity in the hydro simulation doesn't produce uh, too much uh, entropy, like on the on, on only on order of ten to twenty percent, then you can have a pretty decent estimation, first hand estimation about the normalization factor at the uh, at the initial time. But still, once you have that, you still need to do maybe one or two iteration to fine tune the number to get exact uh, correct ones. Right, and you can use a, a type of Newton method where if you have two points, mm -hmm. you can try to interpolate between the yeah. two. Um, it was another question. So this normalization uh, mm -hmm. is in general, it seems unfamiliar to most people. And uh, mm -hmm. somebody was asking, 
is there a reason why we don't publish a, for example, a fit of that normalization as a function mm -hmm. of center of mass energy? Yeah, so this normalization is kind of sensitive to also depend on the, the exact value of viscosity you use. So, um, so uh, you can, you can, we can, we can publish this number, but it's also depend on the exact viscosity you use in the medium. If you change to a different viscosity, this number also changes slightly by about 10 to 10%. 10 so, 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 so that, that's partially the reason that, uh, so this is usually, you, you never see this uh, number to be uh, listed in the paper. Uh, and also this is a, not a, a, a physical parameter, but rather a model parameter inside, uh, inside, the, inside the model, which uh, is fixed in the calibration stage. And I think we can point people to the Jetscape widget that you mentioned yesterday, mm -hmm. where they yeah. can see actually there's some degeneracy between the normalization factor and yeah. other parameters like the viscosities. Mm -hmm. It's not huge. I mean, you don't you don't change the normalization by a factor of two with the the viscosities, mm -hmm. but you can change it so only by 20, 30 percent, right? Let's see. Is there any other questions? Please raise your hand. Uh, I I know there was a question about uh, the test shown that you suggested with the eccentricities twenty thirty, but I'm mm -hmm. thinking maybe we should we can come to that later so that we don't sidetrack your. Mm -hmm. sure. Um, yeah, sure. So, so I think yeah. that's all for now. Okay. So, uh, so I hope you also uh, finished uh, two runs in your on your laptop. Then we can actually now uh, make the plots to make some comparison. So the script we use is this hydro evolved viscous comparison, viscosity comparison scripts, which will help us to make plots for the for this comparison. So again, we will just run through the Jupyter notebook uh, to actually start to making plots for compare. And the first we will could look at the, the average temperature evolution for these two runs. So uh, we see that uh, uh, when we uh, turn on and off the bulk of the temperature dependent bulk viscosity, um, interestingly that uh, the two uh, simulations uh, give uh, roughly the same average temperature at early time and only uh, start to differ from each other at late time about like after four frames of the evolutions. And this is because that our temp uh, temperature bulk viscosity only peaks at TC, which is chosen to be about 180 MeV. So at early time, uh, the average temperature is actually rather high. It's about like seven uh, to, to, to 300 MeV or 250. So most of the file actually didn't see that peak, big peak of bulk viscosity at early time. So these two simulations actually agree quite well with each other. But as you can see that as the temperature, every temperature drops around 20, uh, 180 MeV, then you do see that uh, the bulk viscosity start to play a role and then trying to slow down the temperature evolutions, or you can think about this as the bulk viscosity gen more, generate more entropy so that uh, the temperature uh, decrease becomes slower <clears throat> in this case. Um, and also we can look at the, the evolution of the radial flow uh, in, this, in this case. And also we, we would understand that the bulk viscosity, presence of bulk viscosity reduce the, the radial expansion of the fireball and indeed, you can see that uh, after like two frames, you can start to see that the bulk viscosity effects kick in here and it start to slow down the expansions compared to the zero bulk viscosity case. And we can further carry out to look at the evolution of eccentricity, which is a bit more complicated by, because it's, it's, uh, it's describing changing on the shape of the fireball and also the development of moment and isotropy. So overall, you can see that the bulk viscosity not only reduced the radial flow, it also reduced the development of the anisotropic uh, uh, moment anisotropy, which is elliptic, uh, which is related to elliptic flow. So both uh, like the PT or particle as well as V2 will be reduced when you include the bulk viscosity in the simulation. So I hope these uh, four plots give you some intuitions about what will be the effects of bulk viscosity. And, but more importantly, I, I, I would like to just uh, stress that uh, Jetscape is such a 
you know, useful frameworks so that you can actually uh, run these simulations with different setup and then just immediately can make uh, such comparison plot to get intuitions what will be the effects of this viscosity to your hydrodynamic evolution. So, uh, so if you are comfortable with these uh, examples, you feel free to change the, also the shear viscosity. You can change, increase the value or reduce its value to zero or to a different ones. <clears throat> so if you are interested and you can make comparison yourself. And also one thing I want to emphasize is that all these simulations we are using a fixed random seed, which I didn't uh, mention before. So the random seed is a fixed number when we run these two simulations. So this guarantee us to generate identical initial condition uh, for uh, just, uh, uh, just with only difference of the changing the uh, different transport coefficients in the hydro state. So this will help us to make an apple to apple comparison uh, with the exact same initial state uh, in, the, in the setup. So that we only see the effects coming from changing the transport properties of QGP in the simulation. So any questions about this, uh, these results? Or you have any question about if that's a ball viscosity physically or any, any uh, anything related to the, to the actual simulations? There was a question on Slack. Is the non-monotonic behavior in figure four an artifact due to oh, looking here. at this event? Yes. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a kind of a particular event here. And also we are looking at the, the magnitude of epsilon p. So it may corresponding to the, the, the direction of the anisotropy kind of slightly uh, flip its directions or something to generate these uh, wiggles here. So it's a kind of uh, a kind of somewhat genuine features when we do uh, event by event simulations, and you plot the, the magnitude of that. If you have a perfect ellipse, then then I would expect this to be monotonic uh, a monotonic function. But it's a lumpy and uh, it could be oriented in some way and then change direction to some other time in the, in the late time. And this this wiggle is more or less uh, uh, related to those. Um, Shun, just to give you an idea of time, it's uh, 9.50 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Eastern. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you, yeah, I think do you want to take I, a short I should break? Be on time. Sorry? Yeah, I should be on. I, I, I'm sure be on time now. So uh, okay. be fine. All right. Yeah. So yeah, we can take about like five minutes break. And in the meantime, if you have any uh, questions or uh, interest, you can still uh, ask. We'll, we'll go to the next uh, exercise around 10 a.m. Uh, so yeah, around 10. Yeah, okay. All right. So let's take a short break so that everybody can catch up. Uh, maybe yeah, if you still have that... any doubts on normalizations or other parameters, you feel free to ask. Yeah. Um, yeah, so people should just ask. Maybe we can go back to uh, the question. Let's see. Uh -huh. um, yeah, about the, the, the same centrality. Right. Yes, so yeah. um, mm -hmm. I don't know if, um, um, okay, I don't want to mispronounce your name. Uh, I think I think I can just do a live test to run here. <laughs> if if you are, you guys are interested, we can we can find out. Uh, okay, so let's just try. Say, um, yeah, let's just change the just the XML file. Oh, it's not 20 to 30, so we will just run this. And then we'll first just run this one. This will be go, go 200 at 20 to 30, and then we'll uh, kind of see it into a folder that we can make a plot of this. And uh, we'll, we'll sleep this guy into a different folder. Okay. 
I do 20 to 30. And now I can go to my uh, Jupyter Notebook. I'll add another curve here. Maybe I'll just uh, copy and paste these guys. So this will be the green dash line is uh, the 20 to 30 goal goal. And uh, as you can see, it is indeed uh, lower than the zero to 10 percent. I think the more interesting one is to see is the anisotropy. That's, uh, So okay, so this event actually uh, has a larger anisotropy than the than the go-go one, but uh, this will be some sometimes could be just a uh, uh, random fluctuations um, that we basically pick a, a very elliptical event in this event. Probably you want to do a few events to average, and also compare to the go-go ones. But uh, just uh, uh, a quicker size, this will actually quite big of this uh, go go 30% epsilon two. Is there any questions about this or, or something that uh, relate to that? Yes, um, th there's a follow up question. Please go ahead. Yeah, well, I just wanted to ask if you could also uh, do the next plot. Uh, oh, sure. Because at no least problem. on my screen, that looks <laughs> no uh, very, very different, even more so than this one, I think. Uh huh. And I, I was just wondering if this can all be attributed to it just being one event or if there is this is really indicative between some kind of difference between lead and gold. Or perhaps due to the collision energies, I don't know. No, you mean this is really big, right? Bigger than these two. Yeah, it's it's huge. Yeah, I think I think this is kind of typical. I think sure. yeah, yeah. This is this uh, strong rise is mainly because that uh, initially the eccentricity is very big. Like this is really elliptic compared to this guy. I think this uh, this uh, twenty to thirty let let is kind of a a, a, a unfortunate events that we pick that has a little bit low uh, uh, eccentricities. I think for 20 to 30 percent, the average eccentricity is quite big, like around 0.4. This will be somewhat typical event. So you would expect this to be uh, very uh, quickly increase uh, for the moment and isotropy because the elliptic shape is quite, quite, quite strong in this event, and it basically uh, give you a really big uh, push in the in the short axis and generate a lot of uh, moment and isotropy. So I think this is an expected uh, evolution uh, results. Um, I don't know whether you have any follow up that you want to ask. No, that's that's pretty uh -huh. uh, pretty clear. Mm -hmm. I think. Thank you okay. very much. Yeah. So yeah, but this, as you can see, so this help you to gain some intuitions. Like uh, what will be kind of uh, happening in these uh, in these uh, evolutions, whether how fast will be the increase of the moment and isotropy, etc. So maybe one follow up about the normalization. Mm -hmm. Many people were asking, 
Um, mm -hmm. So one thing I think that we forgot to mention is that it also depends uh, on the initialization time, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. This yeah. is Hydra yeah. at point, right. at point two at one Fermi will have mm -hmm. a significantly different normalization. Yeah. Um, so, so that makes it. I I think somewhere we may have we may be sitting on a fit. Or some people have made fits, assuming mm -hmm. you keep all the other yes. parameters constant. Mm -hmm. We may have a fit mm -hmm. like this somewhere because it gives you an idea. Yeah. Maybe we can publish it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Or you can use the emulator we have uh, to basically uh, fix a few parameters to to get the estimate or quick estimate using emulator. Yeah, because right. The, yeah. right. the only difference that changes uh, in Trento when you change the center of mass energy is this inelastic cross section, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, but that that doesn't change much. This mainly just uh, affect the how many number of participants you would have. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's not a huge. In central, but... it's yeah. In central, it's mainly the same. It's mainly uh, it relate to the, the increase of collision energy, so that uh, per unit rapidity just deposit more entropy or energy into the system when you go to a higher collision energy. So let's say I want to do, I want to know roughly what the normalization, what the normalization is for gold gold at 200 GeV. I could still use the widget, right? The Sims widget, yeah, roughly yes, speaking, yes, yes, and just yeah, check yeah. what's the what's the gold gold experimental measurement um, mm -hmm. in a certain centrality, and then check normals. Yeah, so so that would be a way to do it. Yeah, roughly right. speaking. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see if there are other questions. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We're, yeah, it's 9.59. Okay, so sure. Now we can go to um, maybe the ultimate one. So this just give you a kind of, now you're familiar with a little bit on the, on the, on the knobs that we can have in the just get to change initial collision systems or just the properties of QGP medium. So what really actually we want to extract is uh, the transport properties like shear and bulk viscosity as a function of temperature uh, when we compare with the data model, model to data comparison. So in JetScape, uh, it allows, uh, the hydrodynamic framework allows uh, a good amount of freedom for you to input a, a temperature dependent uh, shear and bulk viscosity. So, um, so with this uh, uh, temperature dependence uh, functional equal to three, uh, then we can actually use uh, four parameters in the XML file you can pass in to control the temperature dependent shear viscosity in this formula. So like there's a, a coefficients A low, A high, which determines the slope of the shear viscosity as a function temperature in the uh, temperature below some uh, uh, critical temperature or some switching temperature. And there's then the slope above that. And then there's uh, the value of this uh, tau eta where these, uh, uh, these changes happens and also the, the exact value of the shear viscosity at that uh, critical temperature. So that's the four parameters uh, that uh, uh, in these uh, parameterizations help you to change uh, different temperature dependent shear viscosities uh, in these, ex uh, in these uh, parameterizations. And similarly, there's uh, another four parameters <coughs> that you can define a temperature dependent bulk viscosity. And the bulk viscosity usually uh, is related to the trace anomaly and ha has a kind of a similar peak structure as the one you, you actually have seen from the lecture uh, from lattice QCD calculations. And it has a peak structures in here. And we would expect this bulk viscosity to go to zero at a high temperature because we expect the QCD to be uh, close to conformal or where in the conformal limit, uh, the bulk viscosity is zero. And also in the very low temperature, the bulk viscosity also becomes small and go to zero at the very low temperature. So you have these uh, peak structures on the temperature dependent bulk viscosity, and this is uh, can be uh, kind of uh, varied by four parameters in this in this part. And this part is kind of you can adjust the width and also kind of the asymmetry of the peak 
as well as the, the peak position and also the peak values. So that's kind of the how the four parameters uh, kind of help you to change the shape. So you can now, uh, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a temperature dependent uh, viscous XML file, which has all these uh, uh, type of parameters uh, set in here. And I just randomly choose some of them and to, to basically uh, as one exercise. You can actually run this through and, and generate some results. And, and this is uh, kind of just a little bit more advanced version of what you just have done by just uh, adding uh, input a different shear and bulk viscosity into the system. And uh, similarly, you can actually make the same plots uh, comparison uh, like, like those uh, with uh, just different parameterization shear and bulk viscosities using a, a, a starting from these scripts and you can modify it slightly for your comparison your own with, uh, with a different type of uh, temperature dependent bulk with this shear viscosity to use in here. And the, the real work trying to constrain uh, what really uh, the bulk and shear viscosity can fit to the data uh, will, will be discussed next week by the seams, <coughs> by, by the Bayesian analysis. And this is because as you can see, we already now increased the parameter to eight in this exercise. And it's uh, hopeless to us a uh, student, a grad student to, to, to explore uh, this eight dimensional parameter space by hand. It's basically really kind of impossible. So we want to use a, a systematic Bayesian uh, analysis, Bayesian framework to, to, to basically uh, uh, to explore this. But as an exercise uh, for you to just run <coughs> with this uh, type of uh, temperature dependent bulk viscosity, you can basically copy paste this uh, command and just run on your, uh, on, the, on the view folder. Sorry, um, got the error. Oops, I didn't, yeah, I, 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 I missed the dot here. <clears throat> so you can just copy paste the, uh, the, the command and then just start to run. And uh, for this case, uh, I will not uh, make uh, repeat the comparison with a different uh, temperature dependent bulk viscosity or shear viscosity. Uh, you pretty much get idea from the previous uh, exercise. <clears throat> And here is mainly just uh, trying to uh, make, make this run as then uh, try to show you some uh, contour plot that we have, uh, we have done uh, a lot yesterday uh, to be a little bit more colorful before we end up uh, finish, before we wrap up the pure hydro simulation sessions. So this one is a little bit longer than the previous view. <clears throat> yes. mm -hmm. So once you finish, uh, you can, uh, there is a, uh, <clears throat> a movie uh, scripts that we have uh, similar to the one that we ran yesterday. But now for this temperature dependent bulk and shear viscosity implement, and you can actually uh, go through this, uh, uh, go through this, uh, <clears throat> Also, this uh, notebook and try to actually uh, play around with the uh, contour plot. So I can see that this is a big file and, and actually has 99 time step compared to the previous one. And then you can make a contour plot for the temperature grid plots. Yeah, so it'll be something like this. Um, so if you don't like the color scheme, you can change to a different one. So usually when I make uh, like uh, the movie in the PowerPoint uh, in the in the in the plot, I usually use a hot scheme. So you get this uh, hot and with the black background. So I usually use the black background for my slides, so that when I paste this into my slide, this uh, become uh, edgeless. I basically take out also the edge. So you just see a kind of uh, fancy uh, hot hot fireballs in the middle. And you can tweak around the temperature scale a little bit to make it more fancier. And there's a lot of color schemes uh, predefined uh, in the in the uh, mat, uh, in the matplotlib. So I think the one usually uses like the jet, and you can pick up the ones that you like. 
or just even just use the single uh, single uh, colors, which sometimes also uh, fulfill a lot of uh, good purpose of the demonstrations. <clears throat> So uh, I think this is just some uh, kind of example script for you to, uh, to, to build up your, your intuitions as well as uh, if you are kind of have uh, your own prefer, uh, preferred color scheme and something you can make uh, very fancy uh, illustrations using, using these tools. And also, yeah, something like this is uh, just, uh, usually we draw these diagrams because it also illustrate the time evolution of the temperature evolutions. So I will, I will not run the movie uh, uh, scripts uh, on the fly because they are slow, but you can uh, try to run them on the background so that it can generate some fancy movies that, uh, that not only the contour, but also with the, with the uh, quiver, with the arrows, uh, vector fields as well. So in, in the simulations. So Shun, there's, so me, yeah. there's a couple of questions about the difference between the Jetscape input file and the music input files, especially when they have the uh -huh. same characters in there. Uh, uh -huh. When should people so, use yes. one instead of the other? So yeah, so yeah, some of you noticed that uh, there is a uh, music input uh, in the local folder here. That's uh, some of you ask, I think the question from. And this is usually um, kind of the default uh, music parameters that was set in this file. <clears throat> Uh, and then the Jetscape uh, parameters, uh, you, you, when you use in the, uh, in the say Hydro, Jetscape, Global XML file, like, uh, sorry, this one only have one, it's not a good example. Uh, maybe the temperature dependent one. Okay, uh, temperature dependent. So, so if, if, if you have uh, a few, sorry, if you have a few uh, parameters like here, uh, those will overwrite uh, the the ones in the in the in the music input. So music input sort of uh, you can treat it as a halfway uh, poor man's implementation of the JSK master, because not all the parameters inside music are coded inside JSK. So uh, so so we still use a uh, default input file to to basically provide all the default parameters. And then we only uh, use this, uh, we only now hook these uh, physical parameters with Jetscape so that you can easily change them in the XML file that uh, was the Jetscape framework. I hope that clarified the, 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 the definitions. Mm -hmm. There's a follow up question. Uh, mm -hmm. Tribuban has a, uh, his hand raised, please ask your question. Oh, I should, actually, so suppose in music input file, we want to print the grid information totally after some certain steps, we have a, uh, we have some parameters there in music input okay. file. So, I mean, if in Jetscape, particularly if I want to do that, is it possible? Yeah, so so you can change here some parameter if you want. Say say if you want to put a finer uh, grid point, like uh, you, we want to output in the evolutions every one time step. You can change the parameter here, and that also be effective. Uh, it just uh, this parameter hasn't been kind of uh, in, integrated into the JSK framework yet, so that the user can change on the XML level. But you can always do the changes here as well. To, to, okay, to so XML points. actually overrides XML yes. file. XML overrides overrides what is set up here. If they are kind of uh, both of them appear in there, if if only appear in the news import, that will be what will be that will be the one you use in there, and then the just get one just override a few of them on the top of that. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. There's, a, there's a few more questions, but um, I I think they're technical. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe you can go ahead, and we'll come back to them later if we can't answer them on Slack. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, let me go to the go through the last part of the uh, of the exercise, which is uh, written as a bonus. But I think uh, we can go through that. 
Um, so I think this is also helpful uh, for Dima's uh, next session. Here is kind of where we actually fold in the fluid dynamics with a particleization scheme, uh, a particle sampler to, to actually convert, convert uh, the fluid cell at the freeze out surface to particles. And then the particles can be further feed into say hydronic transport for scatterings and decays, or you can just directly analyze them directly on the hypersurface, which will give you the momentum information of particles at the, at the freeze out. So this is, uh, this is the bonus uh, part five, which will produce uh, hydrons uh, from, from the hydrodynamics. So this, uh, in this case, we're not using only the music modules, but also the ISS, which is uh, open source particle samplers. We, we will use them to produce particles in this case. So, uh, so the exercise you can run is uh, to just uh, using this, uh, this XML script, which, which basically uh, has additional things in there. So let me first set up the, uh, the run in the background, and then we'll go through the XML file together. So I'll just run this uh, scripts. So while it's running, so on the on the left hand side, on the right hand side, if we look at the XML file, in this uh, in this uh, file, what you find is that uh, we need to specify a few things here. So we need to uh, specify the number of events we want to generate. This is the same uh, parameters you use in the uh, Monday or Tuesday's uh, exercise when you generate the hot uh, scattering events. So, so you would expect that uh, the soft kind of uh, uh, medium to produce hadrons will be the same number of events as your hard one. So they are sharing the same uh, parameter here. And they want to uh, just run hydro once, so that with that, and then generate 10 events from that. So we want to set the reuse hydro to 10, so that we don't run 10 hydro after, uh, for each of the event to basically reduce uh, the simulation time. <laughs> So, uh, so as, as you can see, this is just uh, the parameter we discussed, uh, which set up the escalation system and the transverse uh, transport parameters. And uh, we will need to uh, add on, uh, in this case, uh, trying to do particleization is to add these soft particleization modules. We are here, we use these ISS modules uh, as the soft particleization module to convert fluid into particles. And we don't specify any uh, special parameters right now by just using the default setup in the framework. And you can see right now it's basically doing particle, generating particles, and you see somewhat a different interface compared to the uh, music output that you have been running uh, so far. So it basically tell you uh, kind of the particles it's trying to generate and uh, with, different, uh, with different states and then how many particles generate per event in this case. So this one will iterate by 10 times to generate 10 events. So once you finish this, you can actually use the uh, final, uh, basically uh, what it does is it output all the, uh, all the particle information into this test.out, which is uh, the same uh, tag file uh, text files that you uh, you used when you generate the jet events. So if you uh, use the ASCII writers, uh, so uh, you will actually have these uh, files, which you already uh, tried to use uh, used in the in the early simulations. So we we'll use these uh, final state hadron uh, sim, uh, uh, scripts to basically uh, read out the final state hadron from this test out uh, output and then put it into this hadron list file. And then you can see that it tells us that in each event, there's about 6,000 uh, hadrons actually uh, observed in this event. And then we also, we all have uh, 10, uh, 10, uh, 10 Monte Carlo events ordered by from zero to nine. So once we have this hadron list, which is basically a, a list of hadrons, as you can see that they have uh, their numbers, their PID and their momentum informations uh, listed here. So uh, we will basically use a, uh, a script to, to bring it into histogram and uh, plot the histogram in there. So, uh, so in the Jupyter notebook, there is a uh, notebook as well to, to help you to read in this hydron list and uh, then generate a histogram from there. So this is the analyzed particle spectrum VN notebook here. So if we open that and then we run through different cells, 
So here I just create a simple histogram class to help you to, to, to build up histogram. And you can just read in these 10 events and then make the spectra and, uh, and make the spectra and the VMs. So this will be the spectra, how the spectra look like uh, for pi -M. So basically we uh, here only collect uh, the PID equals uh, 211 which is pi plus uh, for, this, uh, for this histogram. And then we can also look at uh, the differential V2 uh, in this, uh, in, this, uh, in, this uh, in this 10 runs. And you can see that this uh, V2 is uh, very jaggy and also not uh, quite stable yet. So this is because we only, have, we only ran 10 events uh, for these simulations. So this clearly requires a lot more statistics to, to actually get a correct smoother shape of V2 as a function of PT, much more than 10 events. But you still, with only 10 events, you can see that the spectra of pi on sort of still looks pretty good in the logarithmic scale, at least in the low PT, where a majority of the particles are set in there. So yeah, so that's just uh, the, the, the small exercise uh, when you couple uh, the hydrodynamics with the particleization modules and you can then produce these histograms already at this level. But ideally we would uh, usually feed these particles uh, further to hydron cascade or hydron transport like SMASH uh, to do further uh, hydronic scatter scatterings in the hydronic phase and then get the uh, momentum spectra in the end. So yeah, so uh, try to uh, if you uh, try 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 these uh, comments out, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, just uh, ask uh, questions if you have any. So one question on Slack is: mm -hmm. uh, Can you clarify the difference between an event and and reuse hydro? Okay, so an event is the event like the Monte Carlo event you want to generate uh, from the GSK framework in the end. So and use reuse hydro means that uh, say I want to generate ten events and uh, re and use reuse hydro is ten, which means that uh, I want to generate these ten events with the same hydro background. So I just run hydro simulation once with the same uh, with one initial fluctuating initial condition, and generate ten uh, kind of uh, Monte Carlo event of the particle sample out uh, coming from that surface from the same hypersurface. So, so that's kind of, you can think about this like oversample because we, we are not doing 10 uh, fluctuating heavy ion collisions. We do one heavy ion collisions, but generate 10 uh, Monte Carlo samples from that. Or, or you can think about this 10 identical uh, heavy ion collisions generate 10 Monte Carlo events. So that's usually a trick that we use. Uh, because the, uh, the, the particle realization uh, and also the hydronic transport is usually very uh, cheap in time uh, to simulate compared to one hydrodynamic simulations. So we usually run multiple of uh, these uh, hydronic events per hydro event so that we can accumulate enough statistics and be comparable with the experiments. Of course, you still want to generate enough hydro events to sample enough of uh, these geometry fluctuations in the early stage, in the initial state, so that we can uh, still get a uh, apple to apple comparison, a favorable, a favorable comparison with the data. So there's a raised hand, a follow up question, I think. Uh, please unmute yourself and go ahead. So, hi, Chun, so now you have written in place of n events 10 and in place of n reuse hydro again 10. So that means mm -hmm. you are generating 10 into 10 events, 100 events? So I'm generating one hydro event, but 10 oversampled hyd hydro events. Like, over, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like uh, the hydron samples is 10, 10 events. Yeah. So, so, so n events 10 yeah. means, n events 10 means 10 initial condition or just only one initial condition? Any event, any event uh, is, is kind of 10 final state events, but they are using, if the N hydro is 10, which means that they are using the same one. So it's the division, right? So you divide 10 by 10, you get one, and you are using one initial uh, fluctuating initial conditions. So 
So I can set this number to, to be two or three, uh, let's say. Um, I draw. So I can, I can set this number to a smaller number. So for example, one. So this means that uh, I will generate uh, one event, uh, one hydro event per, uh, per, uh, per, per, uh, so, 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 so one particle event per hydro. So I also to reduce this to, to, in order to not run too long. So I can run like three of them, three events. So now I just generate three uh, Monte Carlo events, and then they all corresponding to different uh, heavy ion collisions. So I will, three, I will have realistic events. I also have three realistic events from this case. They are not over sample in this setup. So if you just run this way, you will see that the hydro, this is hydro start to run the first event. After that, they will run the particleization uh, for this event, and then we'll start hydro again. So that would be more kind of uh, realistic runs, but these usually it's uh, like uh, it's uh, time consuming to accumulate enough statistics. Mm. Okay. Anyway, I I'm keeping the run in the background. So if you have any questions, please ask. Any other question or uh, did that answer your question? Yes, that answers okay. questions. Okay, any other question, anyone else? Please feel free to raise your hand or ask. As us. you can see now the second hydro start. So that will run three hydros and once the three hydros are run, it's gonna run yeah, he, 10 Cooper. Yeah, so, yeah. No, so this will run, uh, three hydro and each of the hydro you'll just run one couple, right? So you will have three events in the end, but these are three different uh, heavy ion collisions if you want, with different impact parameters with different nuclear fluctuations. How, how would you run, let's say, N Cooper fries on three hydros? Yeah, so you want this division to be integer. So if you have say 10 uh, events, then I can set reuse, reuse hydro equals to two. Then that will be saying that I run one hydro, then I run two Cooper fry after that, and then I run five of that okay. to get the 10 enough uh, total 10 events. All right. So you want the multi, you just want these two numbers to be uh, integer dividable. <laughs> and then you can, you, can, you can figure out. Okay. Any other question, anyone else about this, about previous exercises or even the theory be behind the exercises? Yes, there's a follow-up. Please go ahead, unmute yourself. So Chun, uh, currently this ISS is taking three plus one D uh, Hypersurface improvement. So it, it can take both. It can take both either two plus one D or three plus one D. So both of them, uh, it's uh, it's uh, possible. It depends on your set uh, setup in the parameters. So um, mm -hmm. so usually uh, in JetScape, it's automatic. It set things uh, through the uh, when you when you connect uh, the simulations. So if the hydro simulation is two plus one D, it automatically tells the sampler. The surface uh, is a boost invariant uh, surface, and then we'll just generate uh, with a sample according to that. If it's a three plus one D simulations, well, tell the sampler this is a 3D hypersurface, you will do the 3D hypersurface uh, sampling. And net variant correction is also there. Net variant. So, um, so for this case, uh, the, the JetScape now uh, doesn't have initial conditions that uh, has uh, initial net variant current. That is suitable for low energy simulations. We are still uh, uh, developing these modules uh, for the future Xscape uh, framework. Uh, but uh, in, in, in terms of capability, both MUSIC and ISS has uh, the capability of sample uh, uh, net baron, uh, assuming net baron density is non zero. So that if you have a non zero chemical potential for any particle species, uh, the ISS can take them in there. 
Okay, so using only ISS for particleization, so we will mm -hmm. generate a different kind of format of output file, which we can use for after one year as well. Currently, the just so, let's say for we know the output file format we know. Only so right now, the ISS ISS only support the music output or the Wish Two Plus One output. Um, so if you want to have a different one, you need to go into the code detail to see how how particles are reading or how the flu cells are reading there, and you can just change the code accordingly. Okay. okay. All right. Any other questions? Anyone else? Yes, Isabel, please go ahead. Um, so uh, my question is a little bit on the about just use, using music in general. So if I wanted to create mm -hmm. a, a sort of um, hydro tables, would you suggest using music directly from like downloading music separately and doing that? Or can I, is it actually simpler to just do it here? So it, so it depends on how, how you want to run. So if you want to connect, say you have a Trento and everything connected, then running Jetscape will be uh, easiest way to set up the simulation chain so that you can basically stop at the, when the music finish and then just uh, take whatever you want, either hypersurface or evolution profile, depending on the purpose you want to use. Um, so Jetscape, I think is a very uh, good framework to help you to basically uh, kind of uh, kind of set up all the connections between initial state, pre equilibrium and hydro all together. So you don't need to go through them yourself. Um, so if you want to do uh, some other simulations like uh, for low energies and other like uh, small system will all connect to IP plasma, then, uh, then the JetScape is not ready, really ready for that. And then we can also give you some other uh, kind of connection framework you can also use. Which, which is similar purpose. But we can uh, talk in private if you have uh, some special needs, we can, we can help you to set up and find you the easiest uh, way to start, start, start your simulations. Uh, perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I don't see any more questions on Slack, there, there are still some uh, more technical questions and I think mm -hmm. uh, Shun, you'll be in best position to answer after the session ends. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. um, there's still time. If anybody has more questions, we can wait another minute. Um, don't be shy. It's a great opportunity to ask questions. Uh, yeah, and uh, after that, Shun, is that is it done or do you have more? Yeah, so can you just let me flash the homework if you want to just uh, pursue it yourself and play around with uh, these parameter settings. Um, first of all, you can try to understand, for example, this exercise you can do is try to help you to build some intuition about effects of viscosities in the simulations. You can try to follow the scripts and change it yourself a little bit. So really um, kind of the way to learn is not just uh, kind of copy paste what uh, is, is listing this node and into the command line and just run this through, but really kind of try to uh, modify the XML file yourself a little bit, trying to simulate the simulation the collision system you like, the viscosity you want to put in uh, to, to really kind of understand how the machinery works. And the second is more kind of a uh, kind of, if you're interested, you can make animation yourself uh, based on the Jupyter Notebook scripts is a good, uh, that I provide is a good starting point. You can pick your favorite color schemes and uh, other things. And uh, if you find make any awesome animations, please just email to us and we can post them on the school website and give you some credit on that. And then also, yeah, so if you want to really uh, try to understand that the, the third one is really want to uh, kind of see for example, V to the function PT come out from the simulations, uh, just uh, crank up the, the, the event uh, to, to 50 or like 100. 
and then just uh, wait uh, for maybe uh, 10 or 30 minutes, maybe you will get the, a better shape of V2 coming out from there. But uh, uh, if you are interested, I strongly encourage you to, to try it out. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And I assume people can keep asking questions on Slack if you have any yep. questions mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right, last call. Any more questions? Yeah, well, I'm wondering if I could ask people to uh, start with parts of Smash tutorial that mm -hmm. take time, mm -hmm. like yeah. compiling code. Yeah, you can. Yeah, if you, if you finish this part, please go ahead, and uh, you can. We can also have uh, a little longer break. Then you can set up the uh, smash uh, setup that the Dima wants. How about uh, maybe Dima? You can take a couple minutes. I mean, Shun, were you uh, were you done? I, I'm done. I'm done. So if you there's no further questions, I'm I'm all done. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Shun. Um, this will be the end of Shun's se session. What I suggest is that maybe Dima, you can take, let's say, five minutes to explain, or uh, however uh, long you you need to explain how to compile a code. And while this is compiling, maybe we can take a five to ten minute break, and then we can uh, start with your session. How about that? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, please go ahead. <laughs>